On Sunday, May 1st, 2016, I received an email from Team Rubicon, an organization that prides itself in responding to disaster situations in order to help those in need. The next day, I was on a plane heading to Houston, Texas, where I was bunked up with a bunch of guys in this room here. Um, it was actually the PTSD Foundation of America that allowed us to stay with them um, over there. It's a place that's dying for soldiers who come back going through some tough times. So this is where I stayed, and that's my bed. The forward operating base had uh, a board up that had all the information that I would need. Um, it was a little bit dizzying of being a first timer there, but it definitely was uh, very welcoming from everyone who I met and from all, over, all different parts of the country. Uh, they had a substation that was set up by Energy with a whole solar panel array um, producing their own electricity. There were satellite uh, communications that were established. Uh, it was a very, very interesting uh, design and layout that they had going on. All right, so I'm on my first TR op, which is basically um, assisting people and families over in Houston after the flooding that they've had, and it's definitely um, it's very organized, very organized operation. Um, right now I'm in the FOB, the forward operating base, which is basically like a command center where they have everything from cell phone chargers, registration, this is where food is, everything else. Um, yeah, I'm going to try and take some footage throughout this uh, week and try to document what I can, but I don't know how much I'll be able to do because it's kind of a disaster area. So uh, we'll get there. I just got my Team Rubicon shirt and hat, so this way I fit in because it's this way. So hopefully that'll, that'll work out well. Good morning. How are you? Good. Awake. Barely. <laughs> um, I'm, video I'm video recording myself. I'm documenting. <laughs> This is like my little blog. All right, so later. And it was about that time that I took on the name Jersey Rob. The forward operating base had a lot of things going on in the morning. It was very busy. I don't want to say chaotic, but definitely very busy. They had all the hand tools and power tools and everything um, in different piles that we can grab up. Um, everyone there was very welcoming. I didn't know anybody going in, but uh, coming out, I, I got to know a lot of people from all over the country. Everyone was really welcoming, really nice, and uh, very helpful, especially the first day when I'm trying to get on my feet and figure out what I'm supposed to actually be doing. So, uh, but once I realized uh, that they had the boards up with my name on it and I could go ahead and check in here every morning, it made things a lot easier. Alright, so we're all geared up, we're good to go, we got our vehicle. Oh, I'm just beast of the go. That's Marshall, he's amazing. What's up? And now we got our gear in the back. Which should uh, get us through the day. It's been a long day, a lot of work. I know. We will never be as badass as we look right now. No, we won't. Got the entire thing, four feet up, the entire garage, moving everything around. No one else. And the piles of debris. Uh, we gotta make sure we got all of our tools in there. This is the dog that I think owns the neighborhood right here. Oh, yeah. It's oh, well. Spark. <laughs> Just finished cleaning this out or something else. See. Lots and lots of black. Alright, so it's pretty much the end of the day and we are decontaminating the equipment, or at least cleaning it off, which includes uh, washing everything that we use throughout the entire day, which is a lot of tools. Good times. This morning, the Stanley Tool Bank had pulled up and they had just racks and racks of all sorts of equipment, everything from hand tools, generators, everything you could possibly need, and they go from location to location, different disasters. Uh, providing people like us the opportunity to use their goods, so they're awesome. 
it was day number two and I lost my cell phone charger. So I don't know how much video I'll be able to do or anything like that. But uh, we're loading up more equipment and getting ready to head back to that lady's house, the second house that we went to, so we can try to get her a bathroom again because there's nothing there. She has no restroom and no access to her bedroom or the bathroom because the floors are so destroyed she can't roll around in her jazzy. Not a good situation, but uh, it's the plan for today. Every morning we'd have our morning briefing. Uh, this was our guy initially. His name was Jim. Really, really good leader. Um, we couldn't say the whole deployment, but he was having them. You got that dream, steam, day, dream. Look in your eyes and Do you guys like Taylor Swift in Israel? Um, uh, <laughs> I don't think I'm in the right age group. What? Unless oh, you guys like Taylor go. Swift. Here we I'm go. I'm too old for her. You just what? got called out. How old oh, are you? I'm 30. 30? I think it's more like the 14 year olds who are into it. Wow. So our guy Bro, he uh, decided he wanted to spend his last day in style, so he rented a bus contacted the Houston Astros and was able to get us all complimentary tickets for the game that night, which was beyond cool. It was our first time getting into Houston, so this is our first glimpse at the city, and uh, it was pretty cool. It was definitely a cool experience. I, I can't thank him enough. It was really a great opportunity, something I wasn't expecting to do at all. Getting there, we walked the Hall of Fame that they had outside, which of course included the great Nolan Ryan, which as a baseball fan to me was in itself really, really cool. Base is loaded. Yeah! Oh, no way. No way. No way. Yeah! Yeah! This guy, Derek, who's part of my team, really, really cool guy, um, decided he wanted to go ahead and buy 50 hot dogs and start handing them out to everybody. Which way is just a total hit. Somehow I've been promoted to team manager or team leader. So I have six people that I will be working and watching over, making sure that they're doing what they gotta do, coordinating plans, so on, etc. Following reports. Okay, let's go. So day number three on this job, this assignment, we got the uh, toilet in place, we got the mortar sitting around here, tiling in the back. Feels a lot better now. We're also working on these ramps. You can see if there's a big, yeah, a ramp there, and put a ramp up there, and a uh, bedroom. There's no way you can do it with a scooter. A scooter cannot do that. So, we can make it work. We can make it work. Each and every one of these people who were out here were phenomenal. Everyone pitched in, gave 120%. There was no question, no complaining, just, just got things done. I mean, we had some really, came up with some innovative ideas in the process, and people who, some of them never even messed with hand tools before were just getting things done. So I figured I'd take them out to lunch, and, uh, yeah. Just wrapped up an assignment for the day. Pretty good, got it done really quick. 20 minutes to move the entire into the garage. I'm happy with that. Unfortunately, our teams would sometimes rotate out, but I'll never forget each one of these guys and their faces. So here we go. It's Friday morning and pretty tired. Uh, my lungs are kind of beat. My back are kind of beat. I'm kind of beat. It's a theme going here. But uh, heading towards the FOB now so I can figure out what we're doing for the day. I think we're doing two structures, but we'll see. I know it's gonna be a hard one today, so kind of bracing for it. All right, so the morning was pretty bad. The uh, 
the residence that we went to was completely, I mean, we had it, we're, we're working on it still. It's, it's a long, long, long process. Um, and we had another team put on, so I was kind of trying to manage both teams at the same time. So we had about nine people on that project, or 10 people at first. We had one injury, had to go back. Um, but um, other than that, we're doing all right. Checked out a second residence, and it looks like it's gonna take probably another three quarters of a day to do this one, if not the whole day. So there's no way we're doing it today. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the first residence that we're working on, which is up the block and uh, try to bang out whatever we can today. If we have to come back tomorrow, we'll come back tomorrow, but I really want to finish this today. Um, unlikely, but we'll do what we can since I lost half my team um, to another assignment, so we'll see. So I'm down to myself and three other guys. <laughs> Game on. <laughs> Dream team right here. <laughs> Trying. I can't see you, Paul. Pete, where you at, man? <laughs> no. Alright, here we go. So these are the guys that I worked with most of the days. Um, they actually referred to us as the G unit for geriatric unit because each of them were over 60. But let me tell you, they worked harder than anybody else. If you've ever wondered what happens to all the leftover debris... That's incredible. That's pretty amazing. And that was like all morning we worked on that. That takes, takes care of this in like minutes. Yep. Like it's nothing. Friday afternoon, and apparently this is when I do all my blogs. This is Paul. Say hi to Paul. Hi. Yeah, that's Paul. I'm exhausted. We didn't finish the job today, but... Don't blame it on me. It's my fault, not his. No, I'm kidding. We got a lot to do. We'll finish it tomorrow. We'll finish it tomorrow. We'll be there. Yep. Yeah. So it was the day before Mother's Day, and they decided they wanted to uh, make things a little interesting, so they went ahead and gave us... Awesome idea. They use it with uh, trees that they had cut down to try to clear uh, off of houses, so definitely meaningful. They decided to take my truck from me. I'm very sad. I had to take all the tools out that was perfectly stocked. They took my truck. No bueno. We are rolling up on our location for Saturday. This is Saturday, right? Or yeah. Friday? I don't even know what they did. This is we're going to uh, Willow Way, 23011 Willow Way. We were hoping to get back to some of the products we were working on the previous day, but we're taken off of that and instead put on an assignment at Willow Way. Um, there was a tornado that had come through the area. It was only an F0, but still powerful enough to take trees down um, in a mobile park area and uh, really just decimate the whole area. Um, the one assignment that we were working on was uh, where a 24 inch in diameter tree had come down on a, on a mobile home um, taking out the resident who was sitting inside on the recliner. Once we got into this area it really just we knew we were in for a serious um, serious day. Um, there was no question that this this whole vicinity was really affected by this tornado and, and the amount of damage it had done was just devastating. Once I was able to get on the ground, uh, all I could think about was what we dealt with a couple years previously up in the Northeast uh, during Hurricane Sandy and its aftermath. But the difference was a lot of these places, people just didn't have much money and um, therefore they just didn't have any insurance, either little or no insurance. So it was up to them to go ahead and try to deal with this disaster on their own. And so we did what we could to try to help the neighborhood recover by disassembling and demolishing this, uh, this one thrower where the fatality had occurred.
this is the crew that got the job done. It took us two days, um, two full days to get this removed, but uh, hopefully it'll help the neighborhood try to get on their feet a little bit to move past the disaster that had just happened. So it's been a pretty long day. We're the first group to get back. We're trying to, uh, you know, I guess get out of here as quickly as possible so we can head back to the uh, back to the, uh, the barracks. Kind of tired, and um, we got to be up tomorrow and finish the job that we started today. We took most of that building down, that trailer down, and now we're just trying to uh, finish that off tomorrow. This will be the last work day before flying back to Jersey. So that's the game plan. Oh, and I got my truck back. I can't believe I almost let this video go through without mentioning that this is Detroit. He's my roommate, and yes, he is awesome. So it is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom! And uh, we're changing our operation to do um, some heavier duty tools because I think we can bang this out a lot faster if we have it. So we're getting a generator, we're gonna throw it in the back of the truck with some reciprocating saws and, you know, uh, circular saws, everything else, and try to get this thing done today. And hopefully if we can finish it early enough, we can start on another project before the day's complete. Because I really wanted to, uh, if possible, I wanted to kind of get back to some of the projects we had started earlier. Anyways, let me get going. I gotta help him get on the truck. Yeah. I felt a little bad about missing Mother's Day to do this assignment, but hopefully she understands. Love you, Ma. So here's my team. I got Pete on the right. I got Paul on the left. Susie was awesome. And then, of course, couldn't go without mentioning the great other Paul, who was very excited to find his first cockroach. More power to you, man. We finished up the day going back to a job we had started previously for this gentleman who had his entire house gutted from four feet down. Really nice guy, solid work, and everybody kicked in like I've never seen before. This was a signal of the end of work for the day. There's Marshall raising and hoisting the beloved beer flag. They would also do 22 push-ups at the end of every day in uh, memory of the 22 soldiers and military personnel who take their lives each and every day here that goes generally unnoticed. It's always one. Classic. This is a stray dog named Moonshot. Well, we named him Moonshot. We took him in, took care of him, and he was our uh, mascot for the time. So I want to see if I can try to get to NASA um, in Houston today during the last day since I don't have anything else going on. Um, it'd be kind of cool to check it out. I totally forgot about it, but apparently some some of the uh, Israeli aids um, people who are here from well, Israel, go figure, um, they're going to head that way today to get a tour of the place. Um, but uh, if I can jump along, that'd be actually really cool. So Israel aid did allow me to come with them, and uh, it was such a great time. I really enjoyed their company, and to be at Johnson Space Center was really, really phenomenal. I'd never been there before. I've been to Cape Canaveral, but this is my first time there. You know, you see Texas has oil wells, but this is insane. It's literally as far as the eye can see, everywhere is just oil wells. <laughs> it's, I've never, this is incredible. Absolutely incredible. I made it to IAH. Looks like this is the closeout to the trip. I'll try to do a closeout interview, kind of something or another. I'm gonna figure out where I'm supposed to be. So all in all, it was a really good experience. Met some amazing people from all over the country, um, from Minnesota, from New York, from Texas, from everywhere. And um, you know, after a week of having been down that way and, and being able to contribute the way um, that we were as a team, it, it really just um, is something that I'll always look back on and, and know that no matter what I would have been doing otherwise, it couldn't possibly have been as important as what we were doing down there. Um, everybody there had a great heart, got along with just about everybody there, and um, even the people I, I might have come to a little bit of odds with, I know that everyone had a good heart, and everybody went there, um, there was a job to do, they got it done, and they did it right. Also, there was um, a cool little thing that someone had carved out of wood, the Team Rubicon logo, and um, everybody who's down there had a chance to sign it, and I had the privilege of, of joining them on that. So, here's the moonshot.